Hello. Today we are getting ready to look at unit number two. Uh, unit number two is called Reasoning and Proof, and it is really the beginning of discussing this idea of proof in geometry. So we are going to begin with um, analyzing logic and um, learning about different types of logical statements. And we will end the unit uh, starting to look at properties, more theorems, and begin uh, writing proofs. All right, so section 2.1, um, use inductive reasoning. We are going to start with, so if you want to get to page 3, um, I do have some definitions I'll have you write out. Um, to start with, I usually try to leave the learning targets at the top. I think you'll find that today is about patterns and uh, you'll see some similarities between science class and what we get to what we're talking about in this unit as well so all right our first definition conjecture a conjecture is an unproven statement that is based on observations an unproven statement that is based on observations so a conjecture is just something you say or it, something you notice happening you see a pattern happening and you make a conjecture so for example if Monday is seems to always be sunny so let's say the last three Mondays have been sunny so my conjecture might be that it is sunny on Mondays so it's not necessarily a proven statement but it's just based on my observations okay inductive reasoning so inductive reasoning is the process of looking for patterns and making conjectures. We do this on a daily basis. We notice patterns and we make conjectures or statements about whether that's going to keep happening. So I've got um, one, two, and three listed out because that's kind of the order that we logically go through things. So number one, what we usually do is we look for a pattern and we're going to do that here as we work some examples. Number two, we make a conjecture. And then number three, we verify that conjecture, which could be true, but it may not be true 100% uh, of the time. So that's why it's an unproven statement. Third item, counterexample. A counterexample is simply an example to show something's false or to show a conjecture is false. So back to the example of every Monday it will be sunny. So a counterexample would be that we have a Monday happen and it isn't sunny. So if you can come up with one counterexample, then you have just disproven your conjecture. So these are the three items we're going to focus on today. So if you need to pause this to catch up, go ahead and do that. All right, let's look at some patterns here. So the very first part of um, inductive reasoning is starting with some basic patterns. So on these two examples, we are going to sketch the next figure. So we are going to notice what's happening in the prior three figures, and then we're going to assume that's going to happen in the next one. So I can see that the main difference is this dot seems to be moving around the circle. So it moves to the right, um, and then it's in the upper right section, and then it moves down. So I am going to use inductive reasoning to say, let me go ahead and add this, that the dot seems like it's going a quarter of a turn. So it should, it appears like it will end up down there. Okay, so do the same on number two. Go ahead and sketch the next figure just based on the pattern you're observing. Okay, so I am observing that the two dots seem to be traveling in a, I guess, a counterclockwise fashion, and so they should land at the top here. So that's inductive reasoning, something that you do on a daily basis. So let's keep going with patterns and describe number patterns next. Uh, number three, describe the number pattern in the numbers 2, 8, 32, 128, etc., and write the next three numbers in the pattern. 
So when we describe number patterns, we try to say things like it's adding five every time or it's dividing by three. We're doing some sort of numerical pattern. Um, sometimes it's not as easy as it's adding a number every time. You might have to describe it differently. So take a look at what kind of what do you, what are some observations you make here? I see that these numbers are growing really fast. So like I might start by saying, well, maybe between two and eight, maybe it's multiplying by four. So, okay, it seems like it's multiplying by four here. So let's check the other one. So if I do 32 times four, okay, I get 128. So um, my pattern is multiplying by four, or I'm, I'm gonna just go ahead and put that sign right there, multiplication or multiply by four. And so let's do the next three numbers it says. So 128 uh, times four. So it looks like I have 512, 2048, and then finally 8192. So if it wouldn't have held true, where it was multiplying by four every time, then I would have, I guess, continued to look for a different pattern. Okay, do number four. Go ahead and stop the video here and describe your pattern and go ahead and give the, um, looks like we're just doing the next number on this one. So here's an example where it's a little harder for me to describe it by just multiplying by a number. Um, you might be able to come up with a pattern that does that, but it's okay to notice. So 17 to 15, it's going down by two. 15 to 12 going down by three, and then down by four. So I'm gonna just kind of jot down like this. I'm gonna say minus two, minus three. So, I mean, I guess if we wanted to be a little bit more elaborate, we could say, the pattern, well, it's starting by decreasing by two, but then it's decreasing by one more integer every time, or, or you could come up with some sort of way to say that. Uh, so the next number, I'm gonna have to go down by five. So it looks like I will have three as my next number. Okay, let's keep going. All right, number five, um, five, six, and seven. So we are going to make and test a conjecture. So um, remember, remember a conjecture is just an unproven statement that's based on what we observe. All right, so what we just did were number patterns. So um, this one says we are coming up with a conjecture about the product of any two odd integers. So uh, product, uh, you're thinking multiplication. So what I'm going to do is create at least three examples where I find the product of two odd integers and see what I come up with from my pattern. So I might just start with, I don't know, one and three. So if I do one times three, I get three. Um, it doesn't say they have to be positive, so maybe I'll try I just did two positive, or yeah, two positives. Let's do one negative and one positive. So I'm gonna go with, let's just do negative one again, and I'll do five, positive five. So that will give me a negative five. And then I haven't done two negatives. Let's see if that, uh, see what I get on that one. So how about maybe a negative three, I don't know, and a negative seven, that would give me 21. So I am trying to write a conjecture about the products. So here are my three products, and I've got a variety of positive and negative. So based on my three examples, I see odd numbers here. Um, I can't say that any of them are, they're not always positive or negative. So that's gonna be my conjecture. Um, my conjecture will be that the product of any two odd integers is odd. So we do wanna write that sentence out as our conjecture. So the product of any two odd integers, product of any two odd integers uh, is odd. Okay, so that is my conjecture. So it says to make and test. We're really 
testing it, and then we're making it. So I came up with my examples and then made my conjecture. Okay, you might try six and seven. So go ahead and pause the video, uh, work out some examples. I would always stick with a minimum of three and try to come up with a variety, if you can, positives and negatives to help you arrive at your conjecture. Okay, um, I am looking at the product of an even and an odd. So again, um, I'm gonna cycle through positive and negative. So um, even, so let's maybe do two, seven is odd, 14. And then I can work with maybe negative four, that's even, but negative. Uh, let's do a positive, so five is odd, negative 20. And then let's do two negatives like we did up here. So even and odd, so maybe like a negative six and a negative nine. So that gives me 54. 14, negative 20, and 54. So the first thing that jumps out at me is that they're even. Again, they're not always positive or negative. So that's gonna be my conjecture, that the product of an even integer and an odd integer is even. Product of an even integer and odd integer is even. Now I guess we could go on and say it is an even integer because I am getting integers here. Okay, number seven is a little trickier. The sum of the first n positive odd integers is blank. So I'm going to write out some scenarios where I add together the first, and then n is just however many we're gonna work with, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. The first n positive, so I have to be positive and they have to be odd, of course, and integers. So let's start with, let's say well, here's what I'm gonna set it up as. If n, n is gonna be the number of numbers that we're putting in the example. So if n is one, this is a little bit harder because you just have one answer. The sum, of course, is just one. Okay, but let's go on to two. The first two positive odd integers. So one is odd plus three is four. Okay, so let's say, what if we have three? What if n is three, which means I'm adding three numbers? So, and they must be odd. So one plus three plus five, that would be a nine. And then maybe let's just do one more. You can do as many as you want, but um, four of them. So one, three, plus five, and then seven is next. So that would be 16. All right, so we're looking at the number one, the number four, the number nine, the number 16. And there's kind of a pattern that I'm hoping jumps out at you. One, four, nine, and 16, those are perfect squares. So the way that what I can fill this conjecture in and what I'm gonna do is fill this blank in, the sum of the first n positive odd integers is, now I know it's a perfect square, but if you relate it back to the n, one perfect square is one. 2, perfect square is 4, 3, 9, 4, 16. So if I take the number of numbers I'm adding and I square it, I'm going to get the sum. So if I extend this to 5, I should get 25 as my next answer. So the blank here is going to be n squared. So that's kind of a tricky one because you have to look for that pattern. Okay, um, I'm going to finish the last few examples in the next video. So if you want to um, stop here and then move on to the next one.